Hi, thanks for joining us today. If this ministry has impacted your life, we want to hear about it. You can send us your story at amen at vineyardchurch.com. Also, we would love if you would partner with us financially. You can go to vineyardchurch.com and click the Give Online or text your donation amount to 757-230-2110. Now here's this week's message. It's a story that would go on to change the world, but it happened so long ago that we forget. You know, the same way you can forget what you got last Christmas. And yet here we are, the same thing year after year. We decorate, we rush, we shop, we wrap, we open, we invite, we attend, we eat, we celebrate, we box it all up, wait 12 months, and we do it again. But there's more to the story, more than a tree, more than gifts, and more than just another holiday. And we all want there to be more to this season. The thing is, God knew that. In fact, that was his plan all along. He wants us to have more, more joy, more peace, more of Him. He gave us the perfect gift, and it wasn't wrapped neatly under a tree. The gift He gave wasn't a virgin mother or wise men. It wasn't angels, a star, or a manger. The gift He gave was and is the person of Jesus, fully God but completely human. The gift was that He clothed Himself in humanity and embarked on a rescue mission, one that would give hope to all mankind. And the story that would change the world forever began like this. Well, welcome to Vineyard Community Church. How's everyone doing? I'm so glad you guys are here with us. My name is Pastor Jacob. I'm one of the pastors here at Vineyard. And our amazing senior pastors, Pastor Andy and Sharon Mead, have given me the opportunity to speak with you guys today. So I'm very excited. And it is Christmas time, right? It's the season of joy. It's the season of peace. It's the season of eating how many Christmas cookies we want because the calories don't count. Come on. It is a good thing, man. So I believe God is going to encourage us today, inspire us today. I believe God is going to do something great in us so we can go out and be what the world needs to, okay? So we've been in this series for the past few weeks called God's Gift to You. In part one of the series, Pastor Parker talked about God's purpose for our lives. And for the past two weeks, Pastor Sharon has talked about God's gift of peace and God's gift of joy for our lives. So we have purpose, we have peace, we have joy, which all of that sounds great for the Christmas time. But what happens during the Christmas season if we don't see the purpose of what's going on in our lives, we don't feel the peace that we need, and joy, well, joy kind of feels overwhelmed by stress, by bills, and heck even by family, right? See, so today if you are taking notes, or if you're following along on your outline, or you can even live tweet to at Vineyard VA, you can title this speech, God's gift of strength for you. God's gift of strength for you. Now I know we don't do this often here, but turn to the person next to you and grab them by the bicep and tell them, you are stronger than you think. <laughs> don't flex on someone too hard though. You don't wanna hurt people. There's a, there's a couple of single people in here that are like, thank you, Pastor Jacob. I've been waiting for that moment. Now, you're welcome. You're welcome. Okay. Now, to me, the Christmas story is all about how God empowers normal, everyday people to perform the biggest miracle in human history. God uses these normal people to do something amazing. Check this out in, on your outlines in Luke chapter 1. It says this. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God, and you will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will call him Jesus, and he will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. He will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. Man, that's good news already. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? Makes sense. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called Son of God. 
Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who is said to be unable to conceive in her sixth month, is, is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I just want you to know today that the promises that God put on your life, they won't fail. He's faithful to the end. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word be fulfilled. Then the angel vanished. Poof, I guess. Talk about God coming in and, and empowering a normal person to do something absolutely extraordinary. Check this out. In Matthew's telling of the story, it goes like this. This is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant. Uh-oh. That's never good. Through the Holy Spirit, because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law, he did not want to expose her to public disgrace. He had in mind to divorce her quietly, but after he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you will give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord has said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife, but he did not consummate the marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. Jesus. So here we see that God comes in, and he interrupts the plan of Joseph and Mary. He interrupts the plan they have for their lives. But then he empowers them, and he gives them strength to do something more than what they ever dreamed of or imagined. Which leads me to my tweetable thought today. My tweetable thought today is this. God's gift of strength empowers us to live the best life possible. God's gift of strength empowers us to live the best life possible. Now, normally when you think about strength, when you think about power, you think about a few people, right? A couple people pop in your head, don't they? And normally you think about someone who's really strong. You think about Arnold Schwarzenegger, right? There he is. That's actually a picture of me with Arnold's head just on it, just to let you know. That's how I really look. Okay, anyways, you know, you think about Arnold, or maybe you think about Dwayne Johnson, you know, The Rock. He's a pretty strong dude. He has a lot of strength, you know. That's also another picture of me with just The Rock's head on it. Um, I have a tattoo like that. Um, but for all, all the girl power in the house, you may think about who? Ronda Rousey. Come on. She's making her come back December 30th. She will win, maybe. Um, but typically when you think about strength, you don't really think about the Virgin Mary, do you? You know, you don't typically think about her. Unless maybe in that day they actually did have UFC, so then maybe she'll look like this. That's maybe how the Virgin Mary really looked, you know, who knows? You know, but, but typically, when you think about strength, you don't really think about the Christmas story. You don't think about Mary, but the Christmas story is filled with strength, emotional strength, physical strength, mental strength, and without question, spiritual strength. Now, I remember one time in my life where I needed a lot of strength. I needed, like, some supernatural strength in this one. So it was the first winter that Aaron and I, we, we got married. You know, it was our first winter together. And um, the honeymoon was over. The holidays were over. And, uh, you know, we, and we both gained, you know, some weight. I mean, she did it. I did. She looked good all the time. Never mind. Uh, I didn't say that. She's not right over there. Um, but, but we both gained some weight, right? And then she comes out of nowhere, and she doesn't say to me, hey, Jacob, Maybe we should get a gym membership. Nope, she doesn't say that. She doesn't say to me, hey, you remember when we were dating, we used to run together all the time? Maybe we should pick that habit back up. She doesn't say that because those would be practical things to do if you want to lose weight and get in shape. Aaron instead comes to me with a DVD that says, fat, sick, and nearly dead. <laughs> and we had to watch this DVD, and, it, and it's about this man who went on a juice detox and lost all his weight. It's actually a pretty cool story. But after the DVD was over, Aaron was like, we are going to Bed Bath & Beyond tonight, and we are buying that juicer, and we are starting our 14-day juice detox. And it was one of those moments that I didn't really have any say in the matter. I was just like, I was like, mm-hmm, don't hurt me, detox, <laughs> you know. So needless to say, we went to Bed Bath & Beyond. $200 later, we got a juicer, some vegetables, some beets, ew, 
don't juice beets, tastes like dirt, really gross. Um, you know, so we start this 14-day juice detox. So the only thing we can, we can eat for 14 days is juice. And there's like some, some soups that you can do at, at night for dinner. So needless to say, with each passing day, my life starts to suck a little bit more. <laughs> you know, it gets, it gets horrible, right? You know, I remember I didn't, even, I didn't even feel like dealing with the youth kids at church. They would come to me, and they would be telling me their problems. And all I was thinking in my head was like, man, stop complaining about your depressed little life. And let me, let me take away your iPhone and send you to Mexico and then give you something to complain about. You know, it, I, was, I, was, I was having a hard time. I was at the end of my rope, and I was only two days in. I didn't know what to do with myself. And, and then, then another thing about this thing that just drove me crazy, was it came with a little booklet, and the booklet was filled with the promises of a juice detox. It said it, said it will give you more energy. Wrong. It will make you more alert. Wrong. It will increase your sex life. Double wrong. The only thing I was thinking about was chicken wings and pizza and a fountain of ranch and unlimited beer. And I was only three days into the thing, man. I was having a hard time. I needed some strength. So on the fourth day, I'm dying. Can barely do it. Aaron, me and Aaron had to go to her, her parents' house, my in-laws' house. She calls her mom and says, hey, mom, can you make Jacob and I some salad with olive oil? I was like, olive oil? I can't even get any vinaigrette or something? Like, come on. So I remember being at my in-law's house, sitting at the table, staring at my pathetic-looking salad, and all of a sudden in the air, the smell comes. I can smell it right now. <laughs> the smell of steak. Then my mother-in-law comes into the dining room carrying a plate of steak, and my eyes are instantly locked on the steak. And Aaron looks at me, she's like, don't you do it. And I said, but the smell, babe, the smell, the smell so good. She said, be strong, Jacob, be strong. I said, I ain't strong. I can't do it. And I go and I grab the steak and I eat it. <laughs> yeah, I made it, four, I made it four days, man. I almost had it, you know. <laughs> you know, one thing I learned from this juice detox is this, though. It, it, it's, it's not just about how you feel in your heart to do things. It's not just what your body motivates you to do or what you dream of in your, in your mind. But it's with your strength that you will be able to accomplish the dreams and the goals that God has set before you. You've got to be strong to do it. You have to be able to overcome. Now, like I said, the story of Joseph and Mary is a story about how God empowers normal, everyday people to perform a miracle. And when we talk about the strength of God, there are two very important things that we need to understand about the power of God. See, the first thing is we need to understand that God is all-powerful. The Bible uses the word omnipotent. It means all-powerful. Basically, it's saying anything in the universe that can be accomplished by power, God can do it. God can do anything. And a lot of us think to ourselves, well, we never doubt that God's powerful. But what does that have to do with us? Which is the second thing that we need to remember. He is also an empowering God. God, who is all-powerful, loves to share his power with us. So we can actually tap into the power of God to overcome things in our lives. You don't have to do life alone because you are connected to the God who made the heavens and the earth, who made the sea and everything in it. And that same God who put every single star in the sky has a plan specifically for you, and he won't let you fail. He won't let you fall because he's given you the power to overcome all things. Oh, that's good news right there. See, see now, Mary, now Joseph and Mary, they're a young couple, probably around their early to mid-teenage years. And this couple, they're in the pre-marriage season. And coming from someone who just got married regu- recently, um, that was a very exciting time, right? Planning the marriage. It, it, planning the marriage. We, me and Aaron, we would sit down and dream about our futures together. This is what Joseph and Mary are doing. They're dreaming. They're planning about their lives together. Then God comes in and interrupts their plans. God does something different. God wants to do something different with these two. Which leads me to my first point. Point one today is this. Strength is found in God's belief in us. Strength is found in God's belief in us. See, often it's preached and it's teached and it's taught that we need to believe in God, which is very true. We do need to believe in God. 
But the reason why we can believe in God is because God actually believes in us. God has, God has faith in us. God wants to empower us. The whole Christmas story is about how God believes in us. See, John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. It's all about God coming in and making a connection to us and empowering us, telling us that he believes in us. See, and it's even demonstrated in a selection of the people that he chose to pick to bring Jesus into the world. You know, when we, you know, here's Mary. She's a young girl. Like I said, she's probably only 13 to 15 years old. And when we think about Mary, typically we think about a post-Christmas perspective, right? This crazy story about this extraordinary woman who does this extraordinary thing. But during the situation, it didn't feel that extraordinary for Mary. During that time, it was very hard. Mary is just a normal Jewish girl. She has a normal plans for her life. She has normal thoughts. I just want to get married. I want to have kids. I want to be devoted to God, help in my community. She's just normal. But God is good at taking normal people, ordinary people, and doing extraordinary things with them. See, the Bible is filled with stories of everyday people doing amazing things for God. It is not a book that is filled with special people doing special deeds for a special God. It's a book about unqualified people who make themselves available to God, and God qualifies them to do amazing things. See, it's a book filled with people who weren't good enough, people who didn't have it all together, people who never felt like they made it on top. And God says, I'm actually going to pick you to do my best works. See, See, this is even demonstrated in the story of Jesus in the beginning of his ministry. Check this out. In Matthew 4, it says this. As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, and they were fishermen. Come follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee, preparing their nets. Jesus called to them, and immediately they left their, left their boat and their father and followed him. Now, just reading that story for what it says, it's kind of weird, right? Here's some random guy walking down the beach, and here are four, four men all of a sudden just dropping everything they do to come follow this guy. See, but in that culture, it was everything to be able to follow a rabbi, to be selected by a rabbi. So a young Jewish man in that day would spend his whole childhood and youth learning the Torah, learning the words of the prophet, memorizing them, trying to qualify himself to be able to be selected by a rabbi. So if you weren't good enough, if you didn't make the cut, you just went back to the family job. Jesus is walking down the beach, and he sees four guys who weren't good enough. He sees four guys who didn't make the cut, four guys who weren't qualified. And Jesus says, with these four guys, I'm going to flip the whole world on his head. I'm going to do something amazing with them. See, it's good to know today that God can use the unqualified and make us qualified to do his will, that God can take the people who don't have the best, but he says, I can do anything with you. See, God believes in us. It is very clear to see that God believes in us way more than we could ever believe in him. He believes in us. He has a plan for us. So Mary, she's just doing her normal thing. She's just being Mary because there's something about Mary. (laughs) And then an angel came and interrupted her regularly scheduled programming. The angel came in and interrupted her regularly scheduled programming. And I just want you to know today, get ready for God to interrupt your regularly scheduled programming. See, because God is ready to do a new thing in your life. You may even came in here today with the same baggage and the same issues, the same troubles and the same fears. But God says, I'm ready to interrupt your regularly scheduled programming because I got something new for you. I got something good for you. I'm not going to leave you the same. See, God wants to empower us with his strength to do anything, to do more than we ever can dream of or imagine. See, the angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. And the Bible says that Mary is greatly troubled at his words. Now, it's interesting to me because the greeting wasn't very troubling. The words that the angel said weren't very troubling at all. You who are highly favored, The Lord is with you. That's not a troubling statement at all. See, 
It was not the, the greeting that troubled Mary, but it was the interruption that troubled Mary. See, this isn't how my day normally goes. I don't normally fold my laundry and then an angel appears. So you can be, check this out, you can be highly favored and God can be with you, yet you can still feel troubled if you're not sure what direction your life is going in. You can be called and picked by God, but still be uncertain about what's happening in your life and feel troubled. See, the angel says, don't be afraid. You have found favor with God. Now that word favor comes from the Greek word cherish, which means grace and gift. So the angel is looking at Mary and said, Mary, don't be afraid because God has graced you and God has gifted you to be able to handle the situation that's coming up in your life. And you today in this place, God has graced you and God has gifted you to be able to handle any and all circumstances in your life. Oh, come on. This is good right now, man. I was preaching to myself. It's all right. Okay. The angel continues and says, you will have a son, and he will be from God, and you will name him Jesus. Now this, now this is an inconvenience for her life. This is not where she saw her life going. And here you are, you're about to get married, and then an angel comes. Imagine this. An angel comes and says, hey, uh, mm, Mary, so, um, I know you're doing this, but, uh, God wants to get you pregnant. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, what? You know, that's the interruption, right? That's inconvenient. Now she has to tell Joseph about what's happening. Talk about an awkward conversation that is. You know, and sometimes we read the Bible and we just kind of read through the stories. But this, these are real people and this is a real thing that happened. And she has to tell Joseph. She's like, you know, how would she even do this? She's like, hey, babe. Hey, Joey. My carpenter, man saw you chopping down that tree today, making me a chair. Come on. You know, it's like, like, how does she even do this? You know, Mary's like, hey, babe, want to let you know all the wedding planning is going good. We, we got the colors. We got the flowers. We even picked out the best wine. We're going to bring out the best wine first. Even though I wish one day someone would bring out the best wine last because everyone always brings out the best wine first. But maybe they brought out the best wine last. People will enjoy themselves more. But maybe one day they'll do that. But I don't really know if that's ever going to happen. But anyways, the wedding is going good. We got all the plans. I'm pregnant. And we're good. You know. <laughs> like if I was Joseph, I was like, what you just say? You said you pregnant. Who is the daddy? God. He calls himself God. Come and have him meet me. I'll show him who God is. But, but he sent an angel. He sent his boy angel to tell you. Well, you tell God and angel to come meet me by the Campbells. And I'll show him what's up. You know, like, I don't even know how you would handle this. You know, this, this is inconvenient. Talk about inconvenience, right? But I want you to know some, something today. Sometimes in order to achieve what God desires for your life, it will not be convenient. Sometimes in order to achieve what God has put before you, it will inconvenience you. Getting marriage counseling for your struggling marriage, guess what? It's not convenient, but it's necessary. Taking our Dave Ramsey financial peace class to get out of debt, it is not convenient for your time, but guess what? Neither is having tons of debt. Get into the class. Tithing is not always convenient, but sometimes in order to achieve what God has for you, you have to inconvenience yourself. Sometimes in order to get where God wants you to go, you got to inconvenience yourself. You got to be ready to take an inconvenience now so you can live conveniently later. See, God is ready to interrupt your plans. God is ready to inconvenience you, but not to destroy you, but to lift you up, to empower you to do what he has called you to do. See, <laughs> Jesus, you want to know what else wasn't convenient? Jesus dying on the cross. That wasn't convenient, but the Bible said God made him who knew no sin to have sin so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. In order to be strong, in order to live out how much God believes in us, we may have to inconvenience our schedule. Point one today is this, strength is found in God's belief in us. Point two is this, strength is found in an overcoming spirit. Strength is found in an overcoming spirit. See, we all love underdog stories. There's something that we can just relate to it about it. There's something about someone who has to overcome that just inspires us. Philippians 4 says this, I know now how to live on almost nothing or with everything. 
I have learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it is with a full stomach or empty, with plenty or little, for I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. That's a verse of someone who has an overcoming spirit. That's a verse of someone who's been put through the trials but learned how to overcome. And the thing that I love about an overcomer is this. You can't take nothing away from them. You can't take anything away from their victory. I remember a challenging season in my life personally where I knew that God was calling me to become a pastor. And I was around the age of 19, and God was calling me to do this, and the people around me felt the same way. But my only issue was I didn't have a high school diploma. I didn't have a high school diploma, and I had to start Bible college before I can become a pastor. So I took the GED, I took the GED test, and I passed everything but math. And we all know that math comes straight from the pits of hell. (laughs) We do. And we all know if you're a math teacher, you're an instrument of Satan. (laughs) And we have a prayer team that I'd love to pray with you at the end of this service. I'm joking. We love our math teachers around here. So I remember taking that test and passing everything but math, and I felt so disappointed. I felt so discouraged, so defeated. Have you ever felt that way in life? Discouraged, disappointed, defeated. Why am I even trying? Why am I even going? I had this dream, and I couldn't start that dream because math was in the way. Mm. Fractions. Come on. I did what I had to do, though, right? I I signed up and I took classes at Adult Learning Center. I, at that point, like I said, I was a youth leader at the church, and I even humbled myself and had some 13, 14, 15-year-old kids tutoring me how to learn math. I did what I had to do, and I went back to take the retake the math portion of the test again, and guess what? I failed. (laughs) Failed for a second time. Studied some more. Went back, studied some more. For the third, took the test again on the third time. Failed again. I had one more retake that I could do that year before I had to retake the whole test again. And in that process, I was like, what the heck, God? I thought you called me to do this. I thought you wanted me to do this, but I can't even get past this. And I remember the last retake I had, I was sitting in my class. They gave me the exam, and I looked down at my paper, and I thought to myself, well, this ain't going to work because I don't remember any of these questions again. I took the test. I prayed. First of all, I prayed. I prayed, and then I took the test. A couple weeks go by. I get a letter, and the results are in. You know, I, I open up the, 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 the envelope. I look at the results. I read the results, and the results say, you are the father. But wait, <laughs> it's like that's, That's the wrong results. I didn't want that one. I'm joking. I don't have a kid. Anyway, I open the results. I look at them. In one year, two months, and two days, I passed my GED test. I passed the test. I made it past it. And then I started Bible college in the fall. And now six years later, I'm pastoring at the church that I met Jesus at. See, I want you to know today. Yeah, I want you to know today that you may have some adversity in front of you. You may have some unfortunate situations before you. But God has put the power of an overcomer inside of you. You have the spirit of Jesus inside of you. And you can overcome all things. 1 John 4, 4 says this. You, dear children, are from God. And you have overcome them. Because greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. You have the power of an overcomer, friend. You can overcome anything. See, imagine Joseph in this situation. And Joseph, who is kind of the unspoken Christmas hero, right? The Bible doesn't record much of what he says or what he feels or what he does. But if I was Joseph and I heard these news and this news, I would feel discouraged, disappointed, and defeated. Yet the Bible says Joseph, who was devoted to the law, and he didn't want to expose Mary to disgrace, so he was going to divorce her quietly. And I love how the Bible says, while he was considering the divorce. 
while he was thinking about the divorce, God spoke to him. When he was thinking about giving up, when he was thinking about calling it quits, when he was thinking about throwing in the white towel, God came in and spoke to him. And I don't know about you, but I can relate to Joseph. There's times I feel like I want to give up. There's times I feel like I want to quit. There's times I look at the situation. I said, there's no way I can get this. And when, and you may be thinking, and when I got into this marriage, I didn't think we had one of those marriages and have those problems. And when I had my kids, I had my whole plan, I had their whole, the whole life of their plans planned out for them, and now they're opposite. My finances, my health is decreasing. But the Bible says when he was considering giving up, when he was thinking about it, God came in and reminded him that I'm not done with you yet. I'm not done with what I promised you. The plans may have changed, but I never changed. Go ahead and marry Mary. Go ahead and do what I caused you to do because I'm about to do something in you that's greater than you thought. I'm about to do something in you that will empower this world. You may thought that you were going to give up, but get up and watch what God will do. Point one today is this, strength is found in God's belief in us. Point two is strength is found in an overcoming spirit. And my third and my final point today is this, strength is found in the birth pains. Strength is found in the birth pains. See, this point's a little different, right? But I don't think it was by accident on how God decided to present Jesus to the world. See, on top of the craziness that was happening in Joseph and Mary's life, a census is issued during the later months of Mary's pregnancy, and now Joseph and Mary have to travel from Nazareth to Bethlehem in order to register. The couple would have to roughly walk 80 miles. This doesn't look good. This isn't going good. They have to travel. They have to move. Pain is setting in. Worry is setting in. They're probably not feeling strong emotionally. They're probably not feeling strong mentally. They're probably not feeling strong spiritually. But there's something I want you to see here. As they were traveling, as they were moving, as defeat was trying to ease in, inside of Mary was a miracle. Inside of Mary was something that was going to change the world. And see, sometimes travel and sometimes issues and sometimes problems can discomfort us. But what God is doing in you is better and bigger and greater than the things that are going on around you. See, see, you may be struggling. You may have some problems. But if you persevere, God says, I'm going to birth a miracle through your pain. I'm going to do something great with your issues. You just got to keep walking. You just got to keep moving. You thought you were going through pain just because. You thought your family had some problems just because. You thought you couldn't break that addiction just because. No, God says without pain, sometimes you don't see the purpose, but there is purpose in your pain. And God is going to do something with your pain. If you have pain, if you have struggle, don't give up now. Get a reward from your pain. Make something of it. See? God is interested in the inside. God is interested in the condition of our hearts. And sometimes before we can change the things around us, God wants to change the things on the inside. He wants to change the things that are going on. And Jesus enters the world through the pain of childbearing. And I've never been pregnant. And I've never given birth before. If I have, this has been a way different message. But it doesn't look comfortable, and it seems very painful. Yet this is the way that God decided to have the Savior of the world enter the world. And I just got to say something really fast. See, the name Mary in Hebrew means bitter. And the name Jesus in Hebrew means Yeshua, which means to rescue, to save, which means victory. And it's interesting to me that God decided to birth victory through bitterness. God decided to birth victory through pain. And I want you to know today, you may be going through some pain. You may have some fear. You may have some doubts. 
but God is good at birthing victory through our pain. He's good at it. See, it is out of the pain that Mary suffered came the strength of the Messiah, Jesus, who would live a perfect life, who would never sin, who would never lie, who would never cheat. And then he will ultimately die for our sins. But three days later, he got back up again, meaning you can get back up again in life. See, to think that God will empower a young girl, someone in that culture who, who will have no importance, God's power found her. And it was the beginning of the saving of many lives. God's gift of strength for you is so you can partake in the victory of God through Jesus, despite your pain, despite your troubles, despite the season you're in. And you can, no long, you can live no longer defeated, but live encouraged that God can do anything. And God's gift of strength empowers us to live the best life possible. Bow your heads with me. Let's pray. God, God, we thank you that you are powerful, that you are good, that you love us no matter what. And I feel like there's some people in here, when I made the point that God believes in you, you thought instantly to yourself, how could God believe in me? Because I've made so many mistakes. I've messed up so many times. How can a perfect God want to use someone like me? And I feel like God is saying, your mess will become your message. And I feel like God is saying, you don't have to be perfect to come to me. Just come to me. Just make yourself available. My grace is good for you. There's people in here who've had an interruption in life. There's some people in here who's had health interruptions. Out of nowhere, your health begins to go bad. And I feel like God is saying that he is healer, that he's with you in your pain. There's been an interruption in finances. Maybe you've been in here and you've just been laid off of work recently. And you've been struggling to find a new job. God's saying he's your provider. Trust him. He has given you an overcoming spirit. Because he's in you and he's for you. And I feel like the Lord is saying there is purpose in your pain. Without opposition. Sometimes we can't grow. God is saying I'm growing you right now. I'm going to empower you with my strength. You may be in here today and you're like, Pastor Jacob, that sounds good, but I don't know this Jesus you're talking about. I mean, I heard the Christmas stories, but this Jesus you're talking about sounds a little different. I want to know that Jesus. I want to make a decision to trust that Jesus. If you're in here today and you want to make a decision to trust Jesus with your life, I'm going to pray a simple prayer. I'm not going to call you out. I embarrass you or have you come up front and raise a hand. Nothing like that, but right where you are in your chair. I just want you to say this prayer with me. And maybe you have trusted Jesus before, but life kind of got in the way. Things have happened and you want to say, I want to I trust him again with my life. I want to start over. I, I encourage you to join me in this prayer as well. Just right where you are, say, Jesus, forgive me for my mistakes. Make me new. Today, I trust you with my life. Today, I pick you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for listening to this week's message. We hope you enjoyed it. Don't hesitate to write us your story at amen at vineyardchurch.com. And we'll see you next week.